virtual machine tutorial and um, we'll be talking about common virtual machine questions and answers also mm, it's not even a common one because I'm going to start from the basics and just go up and up and up this will cover almost everything you need to know about virtual machine you be doing the practical and the tutorial first I'll be explaining some things and the theory sorry first I'll be explaining some things then after the explanation we are going to do some answer so this will be a very in-depth video guys so virtual machine you know what virtual machine are just your physical machine then having it in the virtual form but that's just a lemma explanation virtual machine comes from the idea of virtualization and what is virtualization virtualization is simply um, just is just the process of having one computer perform the work of two or more computers and it's very simple it just allows one computer to run multiple operating system partition the physical resources on this computer so that it will serve this multiple operating system and virtual machines run on isolated environments in this physical computer you something very common here that each machine that is running on the physical computer will be having its own operating system and the most common virtualization is server virtualization however you get the idea virtualization is just the process of having one physical machine computer in this case to run multiple computers so it is from virtualization that we get the idea of that we get the idea of virtual machines so an operating uh, um, a computer system that is running on the physical computer you are going to call that a virtual machine just like a machine that is running on the physical machine and in a lot of cases you can have more than one virtual machine running on a physical machine so the next thing we will talk about is before virtual machine what uh, what are the reasons that um, bring up the idea of creating a virtualization before virtual machine you will need maybe you want to run two or three services let's say in a production environment you will be needing um, a storage server that will store files and this server will be linked to all the computers to be connected to the network so every computer in the production area will have access to this um, storage and in a situation whereby you need more servers oftentimes a production area will need more than just storage server maybe they need some server um, that will serve as um, what's it called um, um, domain server domain server is simply just a server that handles the username and password of of um, the members of an organization so they have a physical a storage server domain server just in fact they have firewall servers different different servers they make use of that and all of these are physical computers they'll be running in maybe a data center within that organization so one server will be running one service and oftentimes the services running on each server will not consume much store much um resources on that server maybe you are you are running a, a um a storage service on the server you the person that designed this um the uh, the, uh, the setup we over provision a server that will provide more resources compared to what they need so there is under utilization of resources and there is a lot of capital expenditure in the sense that they will need to purchase the server maintain the power supply on all the servers maintain power supply electricity warehousing and everything cooling system and the rest there is a lot of money being spent on that also there is a lot of money being spent on operation expenditures like those that will be operating and managing this set of servers just cost too much 
and it consumes a lot of space so that is what gave rise like um, gave the idea of virtualization in the sense that instead of having one computer running just one resource running just one service why can't we just make one computer run more than one services without clashing without having any issues that's why virtualization that's where virtualization comes in so instead of let's say assuming an organization that is having storage server serving um, a domain server serving like three different servers instead of having these three different servers they are making use of just one server and on that on that one server they are provisioning storage service domain service and every other services that they need with the help of virtualization so um, before virtualization can be established there is something called hypervisor this is what enables virtualization on any machine on your computer before you can run before you can have a virtual machine on your computer this hypervisor must be installed maybe you don't know a common example of um, hyper, hypervisor is virtual box so these are the services is a set of it's like a software there are two types actually uh, we have type 1 which is called bare metal hypervisor and we have type 2 type 1 this just runs on bare metal they call it bare metal because you don't require a, an operating system bef- before you run it in fact it runs as the operating system on um, on the on the physical machine this is the type that they use on production servers you are not going to install maybe mac or windows operating system before you can install the hypervisor but unlike or a virtual um, oracle virtual box that this is very common you need to you have to install it like a software on the operating system that's type 2 um hypervisor this one runs as a software and oftentimes it's used for um, for learning and testing purposes. Common example is Oracle VirtualBox, um, VMware Server. These two are very common. You are going to install them just like you install other ap- applications. Then after you install them, then you can start creating your virtual machine. That's Type Two Hypervisor. Type One Hypervisor, they run as base operating system on the physical machine, and it's only they are only used for production area. Common example is. Um, um vmware ex xi and zen hypervisor there's another one called hypervisor i think just hypervisor i think it's from microsoft they are bare metal hypervisors you just run them on the server and on top of them you can start creating virtual machines so these are the two types of hypervisor and hypervisors are the applications that enables us that enables virtual machine that this it is the, um, the applications that we give your physical machine the ability to provide an environment where different virtual machines will be able to use the resources of that physical machine. It's just so simple. Then um, let's go over some practical implementation and then since we'll be using a windows machine or just our personal uh, physical machine here we'll be working on just um we'll be working on just the type 2 hypervisor so you are going to need to install a type 2 hypervisor and a good example is oracle virtual box so i'm going to show you this mine oracle virtual box This one I'm using Oracle Virtual Box and uh, a new version of wow that's it. I'm going to download that later, but I just need to show you some things. If you want to download it, it's very simple. Virtual Box. Just go to virtualbox.org and it's free. You are not paying anything for it. So just download and uh, you can just continue using it so that's the first thing you need to do the second thing you need to do is that this is just an hypervisor it doesn't contain the operating system 
so if you notice here i have ubuntu i have centos you can install windows as well so after downloading this hypervisor you need to download the iso version of the operating system you want to be using on that virtual machine you intend to create so what you are going to do is simple I just let me do some research on my system. I hope I still have um I still have an ISO Oh I think I still have see I have Ubuntu I have um CentOS so let me just File location okay, this is it here. I have in blue to I have sent to us. Let me just copy this to copy or oh, let me just cut them. Um, I so just this image. Alright, I have this too, and that's what you are going to need. Let's say you intend to have an Ubuntu virtual machine. Just go online, search for Ubuntu disk image after installing your virtual box. Ubuntu, um, okay. Alright, so you can, there are a lot of places you can get them but i think let's get this let's see this okay this one i think this one i'm using just download your version the version you want and then um, do download the complete version i think shouldn't be maybe i think this one i downloaded and it's going to work fine don't download the complete version that is over one gig no you don't need that all right if it is windows you can Windows this image you can put the Windows version maybe in the stand but you know Windows is not free <laughs> Linux is free that's why you, like you see a lot of people having Linux um virtual machine so Ubuntu CentOS all of those are very free so after downloading those two these are the two things you need actually so i'll go ahead and um, let me just let me get rid of the ones that i already have so we are going to start all of this from scratch all right fine when you install after installing um, your virtual box this is what you'll be presented with surely it uh, oftentimes comes in smaller screen something like this so start the installation the installation is pretty straightforward just do that then when you are done you come here something else that uh, that is important that you have to do is to enable vtu in your bios vtu bios So enable VTU in your browser. So I just want to show you a screen of the VTU so that you will know what to do. Okay, I think it's VT. Virtual, call it virtual terminal. Yeah, this is it. This is a good example of it. Virtualization technology. You also enable that. It's, a, it's until after you enable that that you'll be able to uh, create VM oftentimes if you don't it might work but you'll be having some issues so just follow the commands enable VTU depending on your 
the CMOS and the type of system you are using. But if you go through all these pictures, I believe you, are, you get the idea at the end of the day. You can see the screens can be different. So, so that's the uh, third thing you need. You need a virtualization and hypervisor, which is um, in this case, we'll be using Oracle VM. The second thing you need the disk image, and then the third thing is that you should enable virtualization on your bio, on your bio settings. So when you have those three in place, then you can just come here and then set up your virtual machine. So very simple, just click on this plus. Uh, I think let's go with we'll be going with Ubuntu first because that's very simple. I think it's Debian based, so. A lot of people find that uh, more easy to use so after creating just sorry plus and then no no, no sorry new actually it said new then you give the name of the virtual machine let's say you boom to Then just set the version here. If you don't see, if you don't see 64 bit here, it means you haven't enabled virtual uh, virtualization technology on your BIOS settings. If you do and you are still seeing 32 bit here, then, then that means your system doesn't have 64 bit. So you have 32 bit. Now you can select the machine folder. That's very simple. So next. You can give the size of the memory which is the ram size depending on the size of the physical memory you have i think one gig is enough just we'll not be doing anything like that will consume the memory too much here anything between 5 12 to 1 gig is enough then when you are done you'll be presented with this place and uh, what this is telling you is that the recommended size of hard disk that you want to allocate so create virtual hard disk now. I strongly advise that I use a um, virtual hard disk. So you create that. And you'll be presented with this place. Uh, virtual box image, virtual disk, virtual machine disk. I think virtual hard disk is very fine. Now don't use fixed, dynamically allocated. Dynamically allocated simply means, no, we said we want 10 gig. So we don't want the 10 gig to be like um, allocated directly from our to be fixed on our physical disk. We just want a dynamically allocated in the sense that if we don't use anything up to 10 gig, don't take away 10 gig from our physical disk. So that's what we are saying here. All right. So this is the size, file location size. I think 10 gig is okay. So this is the virtual hard disk Ubuntu VHD. This is the location. So just click on quit and there you have it. But it still remains something. You cannot start using it now. You because we haven't used our is um disk image. This is just like you buying a physical machine without installing an operating system on it. You still can't use it. So we have the RAM, we have the addicts, we have everything, but we haven't installed the operating system. So let's go ahead and put the operating system we want over it. So this way you come to settings, then come to storage. Now just click on this. Um, come to this MTA. Now click on this attribute optical drive. Click on the drop down. Oh, sorry, you enable this. Then click on this disk here. On this disk, click on it. Then choose. Or you can use um you can just use anyone you want however just go with choose disk file size now you can locate then you are using ubuntu fine then you click on something else that i want you to do is to come to networking networking will be presented with four different adapters oftentimes on your physical machine you'll be having to but the reason you see are seeing for here because this is virtualization and virtualization is mostly used for servers and if you if you have seen a physical server before you will notice that physical servers have 
more than one more than two um network adapters because a server should be like should be connected to the internet almost every time due to the work um is doing so that's why you're having more than two adapters here and the first one you see that it is called nat it's attached to the nat network address translation this one just leave it at this the adapter two this is the one we need to change just enable this then you are going to select bridged adapter bridged adapter is that we want this virtual machine to be using our local um what's it called our physical machines network not we only enable we not be routed to the internet we just be very local for the virtual machine however bridge whatever network you have will be connected will be bridged with the network on the virtual machine so it's just like if you notice this will be your adapter this is my physical machine some um, wireless adapter it's connected to that so that's what you need to do here and then why i don't just click on okay So when you are done, just start. The installation is going on at the background. It's going to come up anytime soon. You can also view the settings here. You know, we give it RAM, a memory of one gig. That's what you see, here. and the storage. Now, the Ubuntu server is coming up. The Ubuntu virtual machine is coming up. See, it's so simple, guys. So simple. This is so simple. Just wait for it to come up. All right. So this is up just follow the instructions pretty soon it will be up finally then set your username and password and do the final configuration then you can use the Ubuntu virtual machine afterwards so with that I'll say we have come to the end of this video guys I'll see you in the next section